So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about anxiety. And so why is it important to know about anxiety is because if you know more about anxiety, it'll help you to deal with it or handle it better. So there's a few definitions so of anxiety. One of the definitions of anxiety is like this feeling of uneasiness or worry about an event or an uncertain outcome. And so typically in mental health, we see, we sort of gauge, is this a normal amount of anxiety or is it more excessive? And really it's the person's perspective. If they think it's excessive or not. Um, it's not only racing thoughts, but actually there can be a lot of physical symptoms of anxiety. And if you look at something like the Beck Anxiety Inventory, manifests as anxiety, such as numbness or tingling, feeling hot, wobbliness in the legs, unable to relax, fear of the worst happening, dizzy or lightheaded, heart pounding or racing, unsteady, unsteady, terrified or afraid, nervous, feeling of choking, hands trembling, shaky or unsteady, fear of losing control, difficulty in breathing, fear of dying, scared, indigestion, faint or lightheaded, face flush, hot or cold sweats. So that's a lot of different physical manifestations of anxiety. Some other patterns that we can assess for anxiety is, is there a hard time falling asleep just because you're, you're having racing thoughts? That could be a sign of anxiety or waking up during the night because of racing thoughts could also be another sign of anxiety. Also daytime fatigue, uh, muscle tension such as, such as headaches or neck pain. So there's this stress response that the body goes through, this hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access and the flood or that overactivation of the access could be one reason why um, someone feels anxious or anxiety is occurring. And this uh, response, sympathetic response, can affect many different organs of the body. Uh, and so it can lead to many unusual feelings or sensations. People can think they're having a heart attack or a stroke, even a seizure. And really all it is is this built up anxiety over time that sort of manifests itself as these physical sensations or these physical Even symptoms. These physical symptoms do occur. It's important to get medically cleared by a doctor first to make sure there's no medical causes that are causing it. Yet I have many uh, family practice or general physicians that tell me half of their patient population comes in for a mental health condition such as anxiety. Some of the medical conditions that can present as anxiety are like anemia um, where one can feel anxious or maybe even have their heart start racing fast due to low blood count. Another is thyroid. Uh, if the thyroid levels are too high, that can come across Sometimes as anxiety. Sometimes it can be certain medications that they're on for like arthritic conditions like or breathing conditions like a steroid such as prednisone. That can cause anxiety. Illegal drugs such as uh, um, cocaine, methamphetamines, uh, even uh, prescribed medications such as Adderall or Ritalin can be attributed to anxiety. Perhaps even too much caffeine uh, can cause anxiety. It can also be a family history of anxiety and this is more common with like the specific fears or specific phobias such as being afraid of needles or being afraid of snakes. Um, also maybe it's that the kids over time learn how the parents, if they're anxious, how they dealt with life and anxiety growing up and maybe the kids also developed like those maladaptive patterns uh, and so there's lives. various treatments and the treatments are going to depend on really uh, how long the anxiety has been there, what's causing it, um, etc. All these things, although some uh, popular forms are medications and therapy. Therapy such as cognitive behavioral therapy um, where I've shown that in one of my previous videos where essentially you sort of uh, try to be very aware of all the thoughts that are going on in your mind um, and if any of those are causing or associated with some of the anxious or intense feelings or the feelings described above, then maybe re-looking at some of those thoughts or investigating it, looking at it in another way can help uh, for those symptoms to go if away. It's hard for one to really control those thoughts or make those changes in those thinking. Um, well, like the anxiety is too strong, that's really when the medications are going to come into play to try and help calm down the mind and give someone essentially more control and managing some of those. We've already things. talked about uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors in a previous video. Those are 
usually the most commonly prescribed in cases of anxiety. Uh, there are some cases when those should not be prescribed. You should talk to your doctor about those specific conditions. Also, benzodiazepines, again, can be helpful in the short term uh, anxiety use. I also talked about that in a previous video. There's some conditions uh, such as drug use or alcoholism where those shouldn't really be prescribed. Other medications which can help with anxiety are um, medications that sometimes used for medical conditions like propranolol. Propranolol is a beta blocker that's most often prescribed to help uh, control the heart rate or um, the maybe the blood pressure, but maybe it's sort of that adrenaline response that can help block where it seems to calm some of the physical symptoms of anxiety. There's another medication out there called Buspirone. It's not one that I frequently prescribe. Uh, it's not typically the first one that's recommended, although some people do take it and it may help with some cases of anxiety as well. Being grateful is also uh, another way that can help fight off symptoms of anxiety and depression. And uh, so keeping a gratitude journal, being thankful. Um, other things that can contribute to helping with anxiety are nutrition and exercise. Exercise is a great way to help uh, deal with stress. It can also help uh, manage some symptoms of anxiety. Um, nutrition, they, there's an association with uh, eating healthier foods is better for psychological health, uh, just like it is better for medical health. I think it's always good to look at a spiritual uh, component of uh, the symptoms, if at all possible. Um, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, uh, St. Paul tells the Philippians to uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So there's some things that may be causing anxiety, such as uh, relationship conflict, family conflict, uh, finances, jobs, school. Um, there's a lot of things that just might not be in someone's control. And so uh, here, St. Paul is teaching us uh, to let the request be made known to God and to be thankful but ask him for his intervention and hopefully that can help manage the anxiety as well.